Implicit differentiation is a technique for finding the slopes of tangent lines for curves that are defined indirectly and sometimes aren't even functions. So far we've developed a lot of techniques for finding derivatives of functions defined explicitly in terms of an equation y equals something. In this section we'll consider curves that are defined implicitly in terms of any equation involving x's and y's. So the points on this curve are the values of x and y that satisfy this equation. As you can see, when you have implicitly defined curves, they are not necessarily functions. And in fact, they can not only violate the vertical line test, but they can cross themselves or be broken up into several pieces or look like really cool pictures like this flower. But small pieces of these curves do satisfy the vertical line test. For small pieces, y is a function of x. And that allows us to use our calculus techniques, especially the chain rule, to compute derivatives for these implicitly defined curves. As usual, the derivative dy dx represents the slope of a tangent line. For our first example, let's find the equation of the tangent line for the ellipse 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 25, drawn below at the point 1, 2. From the picture, it looks like the slope of this tangent line should be about negative 1, but let's use calculus to find it exactly. So there are at least two ways we could proceed. First, we could solve for y, and then use the same techniques that we've been using. So if we solve for y, we get 4y squared equals 25 minus 9x squared. So y squared is 25 minus 9x squared over 4, which means that y is plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 9x squared over 4. Or in other words, plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 9x squared over 2. The plus answer is giving us the top half of the ellipse, and the minus answer is giving us this bottom. Since the point 1, 2 is on the top part of the ellipse, let's focus on the positive version, and let's take the derivative. But first, let me rewrite one more time to put it in a slightly easier form. Instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to think of multiplying by the constant 1 half. And instead of taking the square root, I'm going to write that as an exponent of 1 half here. So now if I want to take dy dx, I can pull out the constant of 1 half, and now I'll start using the chain rule, where my outer function is taking things to the 1 half power, and my inner function is this 25 minus 9x squared. So I'll take the derivative of my outer function by bringing the 1 half down, taking the inner function to the negative one-half. Now I multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is negative 18x. If I simplify a little bit, I get dy dx is negative 18x over 4 times 25 minus 9x squared to the one-half power. Or in other words, dy dx is negative 9x over 2 times the square root of 25 minus 9x squared. This formula only holds for the top half of the ellipse. For the bottom half, we would need to use the negative. Now I want to evaluate the derivative at the point 1, 2. So I'm going to take dy dx when x equals 1. I get negative 9 over 2 times the square root of 25 minus 9 which is negative 9 eighths. Since I found the slope of the tangent line, and I know that point 1, 2 is a point on the tangent line, I can now use the point slope form to write down the equation of the tangent line. Simplified, this becomes y equals negative 9 eighths x plus 9 eighths plus 2, or y equals negative 9 eighths x plus 25 eighths. Now that we've solved the problem once using a familiar method, let's go back to the beginning and solve it again using a new method. Method two is implicit differentiation. The idea is that I'm going to take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of my equation, 
without having to solve for y. I can rewrite the left side as 9 times the derivative of x squared plus 4 times the derivative of y squared. And the right side, the derivative of a constant, is 0. Going back to the left side, the derivative of x squared with respect to x is 2x. Now for the derivative of y squared with respect to x, I'm going to need to use the chain rule. I'm going to think of taking the squared power as my outside function, and I'm going to think of y itself as my inside function, my inside function of x. Even though my entire curve is not a function, for small pieces of it, y is a function of x, so I can get away with doing this. The derivative of my outside function, y squared, is 2y, and the derivative of my inside function, y as a function of x, is just dy dx. Now I can solve for dy dx, which is going to tell me the slope of my tangent line. And so I get negative 18x from here divided by 8y from here, which simplifies to negative 9 fourths times x over y. Notice that the formula for my derivative dy dx has both x's and y's in it. Of course, for this problem, if I wanted to, I could solve for y in terms of x using the original equation like I did in method 1 and plug that in for y and get an expression entirely in terms of x, which should be the same as the expression I got previously. But I don't really need to do that in order to solve this problem. Instead, I can just plug in the x value of 1 and the y value of 2 to get dy dx at x equals 1 equal to negative 9 fourths times 1 half, or negative 9 eighths, which we'll recognize as the same answer we got before. So as before, we can compute the equation for the tangent line, and we'll again get y equals negative 9 eighths x plus 25 eighths. In this example, Implicit differentiation was a convenient way to find the derivative, but it was possible to solve for y and use standard methods instead. But in many examples, like the next one, it's not possible to solve for y directly, and so implicit differentiation is the only way to go. Implicit differentiation is definitely the key to finding y prime for this curve defined implicitly. So Again, the idea is to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. I can break this up into pieces and now use the product rule for the first piece. So I get the first function x cubed times the derivative of the second function y squared. Well, the derivative of y squared is 2y dy dx. Don't forget the dy dx there because y is a function of x plus the derivative of the first part, 3x squared, times the second part, y squared. Next, I need to take the derivative of sine xy. I'll need to use the chain rule here. So the derivative of the outside, sine, is cosine. And now I need to take the derivative of the inside, x times y, and that's going to be a product rule application. So x times dy dx plus the derivative of x, which is just 1, times y. That all was just my left-hand side, but fortunately my right-hand side is easier. The derivative of x cubed with respect to x is 3x squared, and the derivative of y cubed with respect to x is 3y squared dy dx. Now I need to solve for dy dx. And since it's scattered all over the place in three different places, I'm first going to distribute out to free it from these parentheses, and then I'll try to move all the dy dx's to the left side. So distributing out, I get, I get this expression. And now moving all terms with dy dx in, in them to the left side and all terms without dy dx in them to the right side, I'm going to get this expression here. Now I'm going to factor out the dy dx. I'm just using standard algebra techniques here. And finally, I can just divide both sides by all this mess 
to isolate the dy dx. And I found my derivative using implicit differentiation. This video talked about using implicit differentiation to find the slopes of tangent lines for curves defined implicitly. The main two steps were first to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x and then to solve for dy dx.